What are you doing? What are you doing? Can I help you? Always something. You boop the camera? Oh, you everybody a boop. You so sweet. You so sweet. Giving everybody boops. Hey, what's up, Cardin friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just being smothered by the animals. Pumpkin's down there somewhere. She's over there. She's waiting for birds to show up. They don't seem to mind. They just sit there and stare at each other. I don't, there's nothing. This video, maybe the video after and the video after. The next three to four videos probably gonna be very brief without a lot going on. Because of the, the pool stuff, the pool construction. I know it doesn't look like anything's happening, but they've ripped off all the stuff that goes around the edge of the pool and completely redone all of that. And then supposedly, maybe, Sometime today, the crew's supposed to come out here and pull out that liner, put in the new one, install the new lighting. I don't know. We'll see what happens. There are people everywhere out there and down there. So just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, what, what do we do here? It's not necessarily that I don't, I, I do, I do. Okay, hold on. Back it up. It's not necessarily that it's... A dilemma of not wanting to film around everybody that is a huge factor i think it's weird and awkward and just i don't know i don't want to put people in that position but more so that i don't have time to edit videos right now so things have to be very go with the flow <laughs> right that's why i said back it up instead of redoing that shot there because it's just easier to keep things moving i do have some new palm trees that we can't talk about just yet but I'm so excited. I'm so excited about these. These are really cool palms. There are some chemidurias, some tachospermas, and some... What's the other one? Eureka. Special Eureka palms. That video hopefully will be out in the next week or so. It might be the video after this one. I don't know. We're going to see how things grow. I know there are a lot of fish in here right now. It's because I had to break down the tank that's downstairs for the new flooring, so those fish went in here. It's crowded, but it's been a couple months. Everybody seems fine and it's temporary. Everything is up against the glass and you can't tell from looking at the front, but this tank is very deep too. That goes back 18 inches. <laughs> There's a lot of live bears in here. They just keep spitting out more and more babies. That's what they do. Like how I have a perfectly good storage ottoman in here, yet there are blankets and pillows thrown all over the place. In here, nothing. No, that's completely empty. Uh, I know the Saturday videos, people like something lengthy to watch, so just gonna figure out what's going on here the plants so while you're watching this video you just dunked your tail right in the water now okay everything's wet now as this video is out as you're watching it chances are i'm going to be outside pulling plants in because i think it's sunday nights so the day after this video comes out we're supposed to have some frost i think it's supposed to be 33 then 31 the next day and then after that pleasant weather it's just gonna be like two days that's how it always goes late october there's generally just a couple of days into early November where it's really cold and then the entire rest of the month of November and sometimes December are really pleasant up until usually like December 15th. Maybe a little bit closer to the holidays and things cool off. So I've already been working on pulling in all the little plants and doing a lot of cleanup in the garage. Talked about that in the last video, <laughs> sort of. That last video is a mess, just as much as this one's going to be a mess. I'm gonna keep an eye on the forecast. I'm debating potentially leaving the uh, Eureka Palm outside and just laying it on its side and throwing some frost cloth over it. I've done that before. Sometimes it ends up having some damage from the cold, but it's never killed it. I've had that one for a long time. And I want to say 30 to 31 briefly, just for a few hours on the ground with lots of frost cloth over it. It's generally okay. But there's still like a fairly large Dracaena out there that needs to come in. The Monstera is over there, the Thai. See it back there, right there, up there, right above my finger. Definitely going to want to bring that inside. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly me focusing on a lot of the little plants, things that are in like 10 inch containers and smaller. That's what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. Can't do that for this video because this video will already be out, right? So that there's a problem there. This one has been such a sweetheart. She, you know, she lost her buddy about a month ago, not quite a month ago. And uh, just she's by my side at all times, which is just generally true before, but it's to another level now. She's been missing having another cat around. So on top of all the other things that are going on right now, I'm also headed out to Humane Society here in a little bit because I have an appointment to meet up with a kitten that looks like it would probably be good friends with Pumpkin. It's been hard to find a female long hair cat 
for adoption. They go very, very quickly. I don't have an issue with short-haired cats. It's just they're worse for my allergies. I don't know why. I think it's probably because the long hair just helps hold the dander in better. I intend to brush and groom the long hair cats more than a short hair cat. You really short hair cats, you pretty much rely on them to do that themselves. That helps hold down on the dander too. And there are a couple at the Humane Society that have a medium coat, which is usually fine with my allergies. I'm gonna go meet them. I already have the applications filled out and approved and everything. Get a little sister today, maybe, hopefully. This isn't a trying to replace Charlie thing. You can't replace a pet when it dies, right? You'll never be able to do that. I've been looking to get her a playmate that was younger and more playful <laughs> for like the last three or four years. And this was just kind of what pulled the trigger and figured it's probably time to go ahead and do that because she seems like she could really use it. She's never been an only kitty before, so I think it would be good for her to have another friend around. That might make it into the video. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Seven minutes into the video and saying, I don't know what's happening. Hey, Turbo. You just... Okay, I'll go, I'll go around. Okay, good, you moved. That was nice. I suppose we could go out to the grow space and have a look at what I've done out there. Is that litter on your nose? Is it? That's nasty. Don't be nasty. Why are you eating? Don't eat the litter. You come in, come down. Down, let's go. Yeah, I know, Turbo. All those other steps are optional. Oh, China cabinet came. Showed you all the table. The new table right here. There's the matching China cabinet. All wood, wood extremely heavy has some work that needs to be done to it. There's a piece of glass that goes in right here. It's need to replace these pegs that hold it in. Hinges that need to be tightened and a few little scratches. Nothing bad considering this thing's from the 60s. And there's a piece of mirror missing. But I don't think that's a big deal. It shouldn't be hard to get a piece of mirror cut to go in there. At least wouldn't think it would be. Left-handed things happening here and not working. It's fine. And all this is stuff that's supposed to go inside of that china cabinet. It's a lot of crystal, silvers, so there's things you have to do to clean them. Still waiting on the new floors in here. But the construction has started going on the wall unit, finally, to an extent. There are two big pillars, columns, that go on each side of this, and this is going to be mounted up to the ceiling right there. And the columns were, they're not solid wood, but they didn't open. So the contractors pulling them apart and he's making it so that each one of those columns opens up for storage. Going to try and get some file shelf brackets into the bottom of those shelves. The idea is that they're not supposed to end up looking like they're there for storage, like that you shouldn't be able to open them, hopefully, but then we'll be like, oh, you can open these and look, there's all the things inside. Ideally, I don't really know why these are just sitting here. I could, I could probably put those in there, right? They didn't. I don't think they need to be out here separately. So this, I think this is still in a furniture cart, so that's probably why. That makes sense. Let's wait on the furniture cart. There's so much stuff. Oh, light fixtures. Is there a picture? Yes, look at it. Isn't that beautiful? I know, is that the best way to show it off? That's a crystal chandelier that's supposed to go right up there. Place that boob light and have a couple smaller ones to go in the hallway up there. Match this one, they're just smaller. There's a single row of crystal as opposed to the three. Gonna suck to have to clean those, but it'll be worth it in the long run. Also got pumpkin a new cat tree and it's absolutely freaking massive. The other one, this one she's had for years broke when it was getting moved around for the floor. So here it is, seems sturdy so far. I had a hard time finding a cat tree that wasn't sharp. I went to Petco and I went to PetSmart they're very expensive for larger ones, you know, a couple hundred bucks most of the time. And the edges on them, I was going through and popping the boxes open because half the ones they had weren't on display. I put my hands in there and like these corners that were on them were really sharp. And I guess that that's, hasn't been a problem if they're making them that way, but I was not going to buy that for my cat, especially when it was that much money. And I want something that doesn't take up as much floor space. I know it looks like this takes up all floor space, but this one right here is about four inches wider in each direction. Almost just tripped over a turbo. That's what that was about. This one fits a little bit better into that window. And she seems to be liking it because of her little short legs. She has to have a tree where she can not have to go vertically up. Right, she needs to be able to meander her way and have platforms to jump from. It's just better for her spine in general. So I've had a hard time finding a cat tree where I could pull that off because a lot of them are made for cats that are able to just like scoot their way all the way up to the top, which she could do. I've watched her do it. I have a cat tree in the bedroom that's pretty straight up and down and she just scoots her way all the way up to the top. But because it's shaped like that, I have like three other cat trees around it for her to be able to jump down to the ground without 
a harsh jump to, I don't want to get hurt. That's all it is. She likes it. I think this is stupid though. She's never going to use that. Cat people, do you have a cat tree with one of these things on it? Does your cat actually use it? It's no shot. Pumpkin's never going to end up using that. I'll probably end up taking that off. I have all these other little cat trees around here. That one's garbage, essentially. Since there's probably a kitten coming into the mix here sometime soon, and may as well weave all these things out. Give them enough space to be able to run and play and scratch on the things that we want them to scratch on, not on the furniture, because there's going to be new furniture coming. That doesn't sound right. What? That's not good. Something else needs to be fixed. But yeah, when the new furniture comes, I want the kitten to be used to scratching on the things it's supposed to so it doesn't end up doing things like this. Like all that. That's from the old cat from Charlie. He just, he destroyed this thing. You know, because cats, being cats. I know I said we were going to go out to the gross space. We're going. I'm on my way. I know. I said we were going out to the gross space and then other things happen first. This is a, a life update vlog. I hope you're enjoying all the life updates. This is kind of loud. I'll shut that off and then put this underwater because that's probably hell to the headphone users. That's, that's still kind of loud. Go down a little bit further. There we go. Yeah, so here's what I've gotten done so far. It is so freaking humid in here, which is a good thing for the plants, but I'm not loving it at all. It's so sticky. Uh, I've just been moving things in slowly. It's been nice because most years, at least the last three years, the cold comes out of absolutely nowhere with just a few days notice and end up having to basically move everything in within a matter of hours. But this year it's been more normal ish. I still feel like this frost is coming early, even though they say it's October 15th. It's I'm not going to go into all that. You bring something up and then tell you, I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm not going to, cause it's going to make things take too long. It's too technical. Whole point was just that it's been nice being in a situation where just every day I can go out, grab a few things, few plants, clean them off and bring them on in. Mostly just been sticking with the little stuff for now because really the little stuff is what takes the longest. Once I have all the little stuff in that goes on these shelves, the everything else takes like, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours max. Really, I could probably pull it off in like 30 to 45 minutes. I don't have a ton of the really big plants. There's going to be the philodent, well, the thematophyllum. That is the Eureka palm, the monstera. There's a, another large dracaena out there and a kind of large dracaena out there. Big croton. Not going to forget that one, the variegated hibiscus, the sea hibiscus. And then uh, I'm sure there are a few other things I'm forgetting about that I'll notice while I'm out there. But what was that, like eight or ten plants, something like that? Everything else just goes on these shelves. So that's what takes the longest. Have a tote filled up here with what needs to be cleaned up next to go on the shelves. There's some cold damage on the billete. Apparently 40 degrees was too cool for it. It also got knocked over when they were moving that big palm tree when they came to pick up the palm trees, the company that stores them, knocked this over and it lost a lot of leaves. That's not great. Uh, what's even more not great is my Wauquianum. Yeah, that's, that's all that one's doing. No surprise there. I didn't think that it was going to be long for this world, but I liked it and I thought, well, it's worth giving it a try. But it's not a plant I'm going to fuss over. The other aeroids are actually doing fairly well. They just have some damage because I did push things on the cold with them. They should recover well being inside. Look at the VGI. I don't, what the heck even happened to this one? Cause I have another one outside that does not look like this. So I'm thinking that this was probably too much sun. I did hit it with a fungicide bacteria neem basically in a copper based fungicide in case there's something bacterial going on. But I don't think that's what it is. Cause you can see this leaf back there. It just cooked. I thought it was getting enough shade, but well, clearly I was very wrong about that. That's a plant that got too much sun. Something else I look for when I'm moving the plants inside for the winter are spots on the leaves. To have the cooler nights, it's when you start to get little bacterial blooms inside the plants. With something like a banana, when these leaves show up, I'll just take a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna cut that entire top of the trunk off, let it start over fresh, hit it with the fungicide and some neem, and then it should just re-sprout and be fine from that point and on. Everything else that's out here, other than the palm, which I forgot what I'm going to do yet, have all been really nice and happy. Have the various goriosums up here, the radiant. This is the Columbia, which so it looks bad, but it's, it's supposed to look like this. They have a kind of brown and green and various shades of green in their variegation. And then the pink glory. Isn't it beautiful? This thing's been doing wonderfully. I love the veining on the new foliage and it's just been shooting out new leaves. 
left and right. I am hopeful that this one's parentage is more from the Gloriosum than the Lenemii, because I'm not that crazy about Lenemii. They can be more finicky to grow, whereas Gloriosums are just troopers, right? But the narrow foliage has me wondering if it might lean more towards the Lenamii. Regardless, it's been growing really, really well, so I don't think that's something I have to worry about. This Gloriosum has opened up a couple of new leaves, but they have storm damage. It's all right. It's got some new stuff coming up. October was just a month. Things were pretty erratic weather-wise. Let's see, I got some pruning to do on this orchid over here. The other orchids, they're doing well. There's some echeverias down there that are growing all over the place that I should probably divide up or put into a larger... Con what is that loud humming sound? Oh, it's the trash pickup. That's... I, I don't know why it's making that sound, but pretty sure it's where it's coming from. There are some plants here y'all haven't seen in a while. The vanilla orchid, it's been in here all summer. Spring through summer, it's been growing up and around things. So I was like, that's kind of cool. I might just leave you in here because you seem to be thriving and you want to grow up the plant rack. That's going to be a neat aesthetic. So I'm going to let it do that and then have the Anthurium here. Silver bush Anthurium. This has been a sturdy Anthurium. It's extremely sparkly. Don't know if I'll be able to pick that up with this particular camera. I don't think I will. It's been growing, throwing out leaves left and right, and I haven't done anything special with it. That's my kind of plant. Sturdy. Sturdy little Anthurium. The situation up here, I'm thinking I may have to... Uh, Okay, I need to rewind it. The coconut palm. <laughs> we'll talk about what's going on up there. So I was, my plan with the coconut palm has been that that would go on this shelf right here. I was wrong though. That's not going to fit there. I thought it would. It's not. This is definitely too tall for that shelf. It means that the coconut needs to go up high. This shelf over here has more space right there. It's also furthest from the garage door, which basically keeps that closed all winter, but occasionally it opens and it sucks all the humidity out and the temperatures do drop when that happens. So this shelf would be more ideal for the coconut palm, which means I may end up moving the aeroids from here to over here. And when I do that, I'm thinking I may have to set up another level so that there's, you know, the front row, smaller ones, and they have the bigger ones behind there. Because if I just pile them straight back, they're going to shade each other quite a bit. I don't know. I think that's one of those things where I'm going to have to get everything in here and just play the game of Tetris, move things around and figure it out. This spot would also be more ideal for the coconut palm because it has more lighting. I have another grow light that's going to go up on that hook right there. If you're growing coconuts indoors in a in totally artificial environment. There are basically like two different directions that you can go. One is to leave them cool and more on the dry side. And you give them light drinks every now and then. Don't give them a ton of light. Don't put them in the dark either, but you just kind of let them chill and hang out. That works best if you have short seasons where the plant will be inside, maybe three to four months, and they'll probably be just fine like that. The uh, other way to do it, the best way to do it <laughs> for the preferences for a coconut palm is to keep them warm and humid with airflow. That's the special three combination that they need. Warmth, humidity, airflow, all things that these really need to have in order to continue to grow. When you're in the in-between spot, of just like 68 to 72 degrees, maybe 35 to 50% humidity. I'm talking indoor conditions, not necessarily garage conditions. What's going on inside the house? And then light coming through a window, unless you have some really big grand windows. Maybe you have a sunroom, something like that. I don't know what's going on in your house. But the average household, these will rot away. They need that airflow, the warmth, and the humidity. The humidity, they can actually go to a lower humidity if the warmth is up there enough that you can water them more frequently because that's going to keep the humidity up to an extent around them. They are actually very drought tolerant palms. Once they get big enough that they're up and out of that coconut and they start to have actual penne on their fronds and they're growing out of these immature fronds like the ones you see down here. Are you done with immature fronds? No, there's still one on there. Still got the one right there, immature frond. There's a better shot of that. Once they have some height on them, they can take some more drought. Not a lot, but just a little bit. This is that red spicata. It has a really pretty reddish orange tone to it. I'm thinking that's probably going to have to go up here. I'll probably also be putting the golden Malayan up there as well. And then I have a green Malayan that's in a like an ice bucket. I don't think that's going to fit up there. So it's going to end up on a table either on this side of the pond or over here on this side. I just want to make sure that the dry air from the heater up there isn't blowing directly onto it. So I don't know. Like I was saying, it's going to be a game of just shuffling things around. 
there's going to be tons and tons of content <laughs> coming from in here from November ish, probably more into December all the way through March and April. So I'm not going to stress too much about making things look great right away because usually there's a rhyme and reason as to why moving things around is generally not because of aesthetics. It's more because of utility and function. So we'll be talking about all of that as time moves on get to see what changes, what improvements are made. This is the first year where none of the lights need to be replaced. That's really, really great. They've been going on this shelf though for well all summer. Cause I still had orchids and some things in here. To, I don't know why I don't just get rid of this pink princess. It's a plant that I just don't care about. So I've just left it here, but it keeps growing, not growing well. I should probably chop it, prop it, and give those cuttings away to friends or some people who might appreciate that plant more. Cause I've just been just leaving it there. Cause I just don't care about it. Oh, it's nothing special to me and it's taking up space. That's something that I should try and get done this year. The epiprenum. Back here, that's a Cebu Blue. It's been in here all summer. Had some damage during the hottest parts of summer because it was difficult to keep things cool in here, but I didn't end up moving it outside because when I went to take it to move it inside, it had, it had grabbed onto the wall. It's all the way up there now. It seems to be happy in here. It's attached itself to the drywall, which I'm sure in the long run will cause damage, but I did the drywall in here once. I can do it again. I think that'll look cool, honestly, to just have the plant grown up the side there. Probably not a smart thing to do, but I'm here. I'm clearly doing it anyways, and it's fine. It's gonna look so neat when it gets up there and starts to get onto the ceiling and starts to fenestrate. Not gonna regret it while it's doing that, but I will when it comes time to move it and it just tears the hell out of the wall. Not there yet, don't have to worry about that right now. Oh, and as far as all my heliconias go, so far I've only brought in the one. It's a Hirsuta Costa Flores. I, uh, the others, they just don't look good. A few nights in the 40s was all it took, and their foliage cupped up, and I don't feel like spending the entire off-season, that's what I call <laughs> the winter time in here is off-season, trying to grow them out to get them going for game time, for when outside and gardening and having things looking nice and lush. The hirsutas tend to be more sturdy inside. I have one strawberry and cream out there that I might bring in, but it really needs a lot of dividing first, and I just don't know if I have time with everything else that I have to do right now. On my list of priorities, getting the plants out here and organized and cleaning. I did, should have mentioned this, this is important. Before I brought all these in, I pulled the plants off the shelves that have been sitting in here all summer, and I gave these a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol to sterilize if there are any mites or anything in there, sterilize, sanitize. Just good practice to try and do that before you bring the plants inside. And then again, whatever comes in before it comes in, while it's in the driveway, it gets hit with whatever I think it needs. So far, it's generally just been neem or soaps. Haven't seen spider mites on anything yet, but I'm sure the time will come. And I'm just going to be spraying as we go, not doing the beneficial thing this year. Didn't work last year. Not doing it again. That was a lot of money down the drain. So just going to be sticking to neems and soaps. If those things become a problem, mealybugs are going to be a problem this year. Probably going to be a big problem. There are a few plants out there that are just absolutely covered and infested and nothing's killing them been using neem and soap and that gets some of them but it's just not doing it these are a very vigorous mealybug that are multiplying almost faster than i can get rid of them so those plants may not end up coming in i'm gonna evaluate as i go i don't know if i'm gonna film the process of bringing the plants in this year because we do it every single year and uh, it takes a lot longer to do it when i'm filming it and uh, i can just link a playlist at the end of this video of moving the plants inside. So like I said, it's basically the same thing every year. And then once everything's in, we can walk around and talk about it and I can move things. It's going to be a lot of this, but with a lot more plants. I, mean, I was just out there for like, what, 15 minutes. She was laying by the door when I came in. So she just spent that entire time just laying on the floor waiting for me to come back. Breaks my heart. I can't be with her 24 hours a day, though I would like to be, but I can't be, yes, I love you, pumpkin. You such a sweetheart. She's lonely. She needs more stimulation. We play a lot. I have lots of toys, things on sticks and strings and lasers and all kinds of things, but don't really have, but okay. So she wants to be near me, but I'm not allowed to touch her. Can relate to that. I'm not going to judge her on that one. I'm going to benefit from having a friend around here to play with at all times. On that note, I need to handle that. Another look at the gingers. They're still blooming. Late October, there's bees on them. Sorry, the screen's there. I don't want to go out there because the humans the humans. There's people out there working. Things are still looking pretty good though. Messy because I've been tearing things up, but 
Not looking bad. The Xanthosoma. Put that in a bucket to rehydrate. Because I thought, I think I mentioned in that video when I was getting the palm trees ready, I was getting those ready to go, that I pulled it up. I think that I tore up its tuber. So I put it in a bucket of water, and I've been changing that bucket of water every couple of days, and it's starting to push out a new leaf. So that's good. Very good. I can get that moved into a pot with some soil. I definitely want to overwinter that. That's got to come in. Oh, and cactus and succulents. You didn't see those outside because I'm going to be storing those in the bathroom upstairs where the sink was full of palm trees. It's a nice, cool bathroom with lots of bright morning light. I think they'll do well in there. Oh, hi, honey. Hey, sweetie pie. You just want some love. Always got lots of love for my pumpkin. Get in there and scratch those eyes. Clean out those eye buggies. Oh, just sweetheart. Love you, pumpkin. Don't look so excited about it. She's waiting for treats. You're not going to get any treats. A special kidney diet. Have to cut back on those treats. Sorry, pumpkin. Oh, I just tracked a whole bunch of dirt in here. Now I need to vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Yes, the fish tank's still in here. Waiting on some more supplies to get that moved into the other room. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Don't I just instinctively yell when I come out here because I'm used to the heater being on. Didn't need to do that. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's going beautifully for you. Dracenia is on the rebound, starting to plump up a little bit. I don't want to drench this all at one time. I know I said I was going to go, but I feel like I should talk about this. It was dry for such a long time that I don't want it to just drench it. I've been giving it little bits of water every day. I'm going to do that for probably a week. And then I'll go ahead and give it a heavy soak, but just want trying to avoid root rot. That's all. If you water it too much at one time when it's been dry for a long time, you increase the risk of root rot. It made it this far, so I get impatient and kill it. Now, there is another Dracaena under the pile of boxes, too. I forgot to mention that in that video. It's still got green on it, so I cut most of the brown off and I put it in here. It's not actually in the water. It's close to being in the water. It's not quite. And it's starting to swell up, so I think it's going to be okay. That's a marginata. Sturdy plants. They, they've survived the box apocalypse of the garage this year yeah i know that was really lame comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody have you started your growth spaces yet i know a lot of y'all have already moved your plants in it sucks it's just part of it it's part of the process right now it's just the off season we get to plan things and maybe tend to things that are more tedious with the little plants some small repots cutting time propagation time time to sit back and have some daydreaming about what can be done next year Plenty of fun to still be had. Still plenty of fun to be had. I said that weird the first time. Leaving it in there, though, I think it was worth hearing. Okay, anyways, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.